Just take one hit. Don't you want to be cool? <laughs> Gather round everyone. Do? The show's about to begin. Turn on, tune in, drop out, this show's amazing It's Super Lemon Haze, you know them boys always blazing Put one in the air, fill your glass and get to raisin Kirkman praising, stool flag waving Chopping up the topics is the choking us chronic Scott and Eric breaking it down like 21st century profits Eyes glazed and minds days, it's knowledge they convey Roll up and consume the Super Lemon Haze Super Super, super Lemon Haze Haze. Going to ask you several questions. For lemon haze. How do you feel? I feel like a like a slice of butter melting on top of a big old pile of flapjacks. Yeah. Well, this is cute. You're on the uh, you're on the old back deck. This is nice. You got it, man. Your old back deck, huh? That's a beautiful back deck. I know. Soon to be even better, maybe. We're um we're getting some quotes for pools. You're getting a quote for a pool? It's fucking COVID, man. It's driving me mad. It's 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 gonna make me dig up my fucking lawn and potentially put in a fucking backyard pool. Wow. So well we're getting quotes. We're not we're not finalizing any details yet. So we're just um we're just putting together the details for price, size. You know, they got these like fucking cool ways to make your backyard look like you got a pool even though you don't have a fucking pool yet you know what i'm saying so huh. we're pricing it out you know because we, we've been looking for that second fucking home man we we i was again i was on that kick after we got back from our little scoot up to maine for a week and um but everything's untouchable right now no you know nothing nothing within like 100 100 miles is affordable it's just it's going through the roof you know everyone's yeah. competing for these fucking spots so and we're not we're not yet willing to make that two hour or three hour drive you know so if we can keep it an hour and a half short then we're good uh it makes sense for us but right now um there's just nothing that's touchable so we're trying to make our life a little bit more comfortable especially in the summer times uh, you know this summer was fucking brutal with the covid thing no camps fucking strings of 90 degree days you know we had like weeks and weeks and weeks of 90 degree hot summer days where we couldn't fucking go anywhere and um i don't know did you see that little clip i put in at the middle of our our last episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, you, did you see that i thought that was funny yeah it's hot as fuck man i've been down there i was just gonna say i've been down there the couple of times i've come down it's been fucking miserable miserable you only came, you only came down for that one time though right I'm gonna, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna... yeah, when we were down in like, obviously we were down in uh, mid July there. And then I came down last week for one night, just in and out just to check on stuff. Yeah, you motherfucker didn't say a word. No, you were in and out like fucking Batman. I saw I don't even think I saw you come in. But I had gotten home from the gym and then I in the corner of my eye when I was getting up the stairs from the basement. I saw Jenny walking home with the carriage and I look in the other corner of my eye and there's your fucking, your fucking car. I was like, yeah, that, mother, that motherfucker, he could have came over, could have had a beer, could have fucking smoked something. He just, he just decided to come home, do his thing and go back like a fucking I didn't day. get home. I didn't get home till like five or six from everything. And then I was just grabbing, I needed to grab a couple of uh, like checkbooks and stuff just because we have a couple of things we're dealing with up in Maine. And um, yeah, I had to be right back. I had to be back by, <laughs> sounds so dumb and so like cheesy and fucking like New Englandy, but my wife was in a, a, a sailboat race with her father. So I had to get back in time to fucking take the kid. She was going to be in this regatta. <laughs> And I, I had to get back in time. Otherwise, I was going to be toast. I would have got my ass kicked. <laughs> so. So, yeah. That's the, that's the whitest fucking problem I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> the whitest fucking problem. Well, it was this awesome, like, you know, it was like, it was like this great, like, um, you know, father-daughter moment where they were, uh, were going to get together. And she's going to work, the, you know, work the jib. 
and uh, he was the captain of <laughs> the boat. So it was that? a good thing. So I had to take the kids, obviously. So I had to get my ass back up there. But I also needed to fetch a couple of things from the house, like the good fetch boy that I am. So, so yeah, <clears throat> I didn't have much time. Still no fucking excuse, man. If I was fucking shuttling home and you were living next door and you saw and I saw your lights on and I had to go up the next day for my fucking wife sailing competition regatta, I'd give you a fucking buzz. I'd be like, hey, man, what's up? What's up? How you doing? Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I'm outside. Yeah, I'm fucking cooking on my grill. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say hi. I'm just going to fucking. I had well, I did not cook on the grill. I can assure I'm you. Just of kidding. That. I ordered I, some Chinese, <laughs> I ordered Chinese food and passed out, and that was about the end of that. Nice. What did you order? Of, some some general gals, or what did you get? Yeah, I had a little sesame chicken action from nice. uh, from uh, the uh, the one right right down the street over there, and it was yeah. uh, excellent. It was excellent. Put down a couple yeah, of yeah. cloud candies, and uh, it was off. I was off and running. Uh, yeah, I got my. Uh, you got anything over there? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm working with uh, my cosmic. This, Cosmic distortion. Oh, one of my favorites. There's your, your fucking is, squirrel. What's it called? Mighty that, squirrel. No, no, no. This is yeah. Well, that's good for you. That's excellent yeah. to have there. This is uh Booth Bay's finest. This is the six three three. Nice. The Booth Bay Craft Brewery. Another one of my favorites from, uh, <laughs> from up here in Maine. So how's it going up there? We're hanging out, you know, just avoiding yeah. uh, avoiding COVID and enjoying the fact that there's like zero cases and only uh, a million people that live in overall Maine, which is pretty awesome, you know? Yeah. No, you're lucky. I mean, like I said, we were there. That's the only reason why we went up there, man, was because fucking nothing. There's nothing you going look pretty on. I saw, those, I saw some of those pictures. You guys look pretty happy up yeah, there. Yeah, it was, it was fun. I mean, it wasn't inexpensive just because, you know, we were staying at a place that you know, it was pricey, but it was exactly what we needed. You were you know, staying in a fancy place. You were staying in a very nice place, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, so we were paying for privacy. That's pretty much what we we're doing. We were paying a yeah. premium. You know, we we initially were going to stay in Massachusetts and go to the North Shore, but you know, we were going to stay in a hotel type place, which you know I had shared lobbies and and um, elevators and things. And so, um, my mom coming coming from Philly and you know being who she is was just like, yeah, it's not going to fly for me. Uh, which was surprising to us because she didn't. We we were we were very open and, and honest and sending her links and shit, telling her exactly what we were doing and what we were planning. And we also had friends staying at this place before, early in the summer, and they said like everything was like meticulous, like the shit was clean, like there was no one without masks. So we thought we were in, in good shape. But when she came up, she sort of just dropped it on us, and then so we just scrammed. We were just like, what the fuck are we gonna do? Uh, Jenny and I sort of put our thinking caps on. Um, you know, she found she found where we were going. They had um, they had some openings, and you know, sort of apartment living lifestyle. So we had our own doors, our own keys. We didn't have to do any like common shit, and um, it was great. Yeah, I mean, so that's pretty much what we were playing for. So obviously, we were paying a premium for the place, uh, but you know, Maine in general is is pretty affordable. So the, it wasn't like the meals or anything like that was um, was crazy, uh, except unless you ate there where we were staying, but. Uh, but it was beautiful. I mean, the fucking view, um, the cliffs, I run every morning. I was fucking running up and down the cliffs. You know, it was about like a three mile loop um, along along the path and then back 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 around to, um, to where we were staying. And that's how the day started, man. We were fucking going. We were did. I did my loop. Then we had breakfast. Then we kind of did like a toy cost. It's like we we're going to stay at the pool or go to the beach beach was walking distance from us um and unlike you know the northern maine where we were in southern maine was just, you know it's all sand so there's no there's not a lot of rocks unless you're obviously walking on the cliffs and shit like i was talking about but um yeah a overall, lot of sand area a lot of sand area right in that in that area that all that place is uh, awesome soft sandy beaches it's good yeah yeah so it was it was a lot of fun um you know drank a lot of margaritas um smoked my pen like night and day uh i had my regimen was i'd wake up uh go for my run come back i'd, I'd eat a gummy so this is around like you know 8 30 go to breakfast hit my pen go to the beach or to the pool have lunch second gummy so i was just like <laughs> You know, because I'm with the kids too, so I had it. I couldn't. I couldn't really. Um, yeah, you guys had a full crew. That was. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It was everything. So I had to do. Yeah, it. I, I mean, the the best thing I've heard the 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 for me the best thing with Maine is just that. Um, and you know, we've had um a couple of friends, 
either a couple of friends or family come up and visit or throughout the summer, or we've had um, a couple of neighbors that uh, hadn't made, made it up here yet and live in New York or New Jersey and just didn't know what it was like up here yet. And then finally made it up here because they have a house in our neighborhood and they finally like figured it out. Yeah. Um, and most of the time the comments are, it seems like it, it's not real life up there. Like, the restrictions are less. Um, there's no, you know, there's not as many cases. Uh, there's not as many people. Um, it's almost like fantasy land up here a bit, like in the sense of like, people are still very safe. People are, um, you know, they're, they're wearing their masks. There's plenty of, um, plenty of restrictions and, <clears throat> and measures put in place to keep people safe. But, um, but yeah, things like life's a little bit more normal up here. There's a lot of outdoor activity that, as you were saying, you know, you're out on, Cliffs, cliffs and running and, 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 and being out and active. Um, and then there's, yeah, there's the opportunity right now. I mean, it won't be much longer, but there's this opportunity to uh, a lot of outdoor dining and a lot of outdoor space. And, you know, you don't have to worry about crowding a city street or shutting down somebody's, you know, you don't have to worry about start shutting down Main Street and or Moody Street and Wal <laughs> Waltham. I know like that, which I mean, that's awesome. I, yeah. I'm not talking that. I'm just saying that's a heck of an operation, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, and talk about getting the chamber, the old chamber of commerce involved. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, that, I, I just, it seems like you know it's like fantasy land up here in Maine a bit, which is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, that was the weird thing. You know, it was it was definitely uh, it was quiet on the quiet side. You know, we've been there a couple of times, so it was definitely on the quiet side. The streets weren't as packed. Um, the beaches were packed, so, but I but I was wondering if it was just local people. Um, I never, yeah. I have actually never been there at the height of the season. You know? The weekenders just hanging out because they're yeah. in the state, but they're further up inland and they're just coming down for the weekend and stuff that's where it happens in my exactly time. yeah yeah but the you know the restaurants you, everything had to be res you know you had to reserve everything so we just called yeah. the night out we never had a call in advance um yeah it seems like everything's reservation style because they're just at like 40 percent capacity now exactly like just, they can't have anybody in there like the couple of places that we have gone to not that there's that many that we're, we're we're not that interested in going out like when we're up here we're doing our own thing anyway but um, the couple of places that we do go that we're comfortable with. Yeah. They're, um, outdoor seating and extremely limited because yeah, they're, um, they're just, they have less seating cause they're spacing yeah. everybody out and keeping it all distanced. Yeah. So did you end up watching that? I'm, I'm just curious. Did you end up watching the, the last episode that I was on with Cynthia? Yeah. Um, I watched parts of it. I, I didn't get through all of it. It was, was a long time. We were, yeah, it we was good. I mean, while. obviously it was good. You guys were jiving, which was great. Uh, I just, I yeah. didn't get through, I didn't get through all of it. Um, Obviously, I'm catching up on the Kirk stuff too. Uh, yeah. Listening to his little um, his little monologue there minutes. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, seventeen minutes of uh, of interesting emotion. Was, and, yeah. Um. So we're gonna have. I think John from Scranton's gonna come on. For yeah, a we'll get minutes. to that. Just, I'm sure. Sorry, I'm jumping. Yeah. Back. No, that's cool. But um. But I, you know, you know, there's just been a lot of things that's happened in the last month. And, you know, I actually I'm curious to get John's perspective um, without his whole crew and posse, because I feel like sometimes he acts differently when he's with his like Mincel people or whatever. So sure. I want I wanted to grab him just to kind of get um, at least also uh, some feedback and review of what it was like with him uh, the weekend because he went he went to Saco. Uh, I think to both shows when they did the live shows, right? And then it was, I think it was Monday, right? When when he made that announcement that oh, he was, it was like he was right going to get help, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to get John's perspective on that and also hear uh, some of his thoughts on when he heard he was coming back. Good, yeah, so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll hit that, that up. Way. Good. Um, and then meanwhile, yeah, as usual, you've been uh, you've been poking <laughs> bears and talking to people as always. Yeah, you know, but like. Um, I'm getting along with these guys really well. You know, it's, it's hard now for me to not be biased just because I'm, I'm really cheering for the Mars and the chiefs and the Cynthia's like, I'm really, I'm really into what their, what their, um, yeah, what their jive is. And like, you know, I, and I said this to, to tomorrow before too. And I think I even say this on the end of the pod, but you know, I think what initially scared me away from really interacting and, tr and, you know, retweeting and, and really engaging with those guys was some of the, the political stuff, the political cartoon things that he was producing. Cause I, like I was saying, you know, that was like right at the start of our kind of podcasting. And, uh, it, it, it was like a little freaky. I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to piss anybody off right now to start talking to these people. But then obviously they kept doing more shit and I kept reading more shit and watching more of the videos. And I started to really listen to them and, 
uh, that's when I really wanted to get more involved in what they were doing. And, you know, now I think I almost feel like things have flipped for both of them. I feel like, you know, now that they're getting some endorsements from the community, um, I think Hoffman, you know, the, the director or the chairman, I think is also on board with some of the things that they're putting out there, like the pies program and things. So I think I almost feel like they're dialing back a little bit of the, you know, the, the nuts, the, the crazy stuff with the, with the political cartoons. And I think they're both trying to get a little bit more serious. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you're following Mar, but like he's putting out these like exercise videos. He's trying to be super positive now. So I think they're trying to, which I, I believe is super smart, you know, like, like their shit's good. And I think they could, it could really get spoiled. Yeah, don't if, be too if, narrow. That's all. Yeah. 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 Um, and their message is strong, you know, their message is, and I think it's coming from a, from it, it's a, it's coming from like a great place for the two of them, but also it's the mixture of like his passion, his history, uh, with marijuana, with, you know, with incarceration, with the law and her, um, you know, experience with education and, and outcomes and research. So I think, I think the two of them just have a very strong product right now, uh, between the reports, their videos. And I think, I think people are starting to listen. So, which is really encouraging to me because I think initially, I think, I feel like Mike and Grant, they were like, dude, these guys are crazy. They're nuts. They're putting out this stupid shit. Uh, none of it's vouched for. It's all made up. It's all bullshit. And it's it's interesting to sort of be watching this live where this tide's sort of shifting and turning. So I'm glad. At least I'm glad I went with my gut and figured out over you know a four or five week span that you know what they're what they're doing is really important. And um, I think that's kind of why I keep I keep going with them. So it's it's you know unless they really unless they truly fuck up, it's going to be hard for me to not be cheering for 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 these guys and and for their success. And I you know when I say success, I mean just just getting shit on the board. You know, just getting people to talk about what they're trying to talk about. And then of course you know in the end they're both trying to get into the business. So um, you know I, I I obviously root for them in terms of their success in business, but. And I think the more mm-hmm. the um, the more the the state continues to open up and loosen up, the more this silly little Cambridge skirmish comes to an end as well, so to speak. Um, I just yeah. think that I, I think the further on we go with the more states opening up and um, you know, every election is a new is a new step forward in the cannabis movement. So yeah, and you know, I, I do think there's a bit of like, everybody's kind of, uh, you know, squibbling, squabbling for scraps, so to yeah. speak. And uh, those scraps are going to continue to get bigger and bigger as if just as a whole from the big picture also. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting you mentioned the election piece because um, there's so much news about different states now getting marijuana on the ballot. Um, and and also mm-hmm. there's just a lot of reporting and polls being put out there nationally and, and and within these states and you know it's it's a it's a very popular plant i mean we're going we're, we're going fucking full circle now i mean this is really talk about the rewinding of, of prohibition i mean obviously we're not legalizing this federally so there's, there's still a huge leap that we need to make i think to get this um treated similar to that of like alcohol or something um in terms of the legality of it and and the accessibility to it but um you know having it on the ballot uh initially was a huge turnoff right i feel like even like trump had said that before that you know speaking about marijuana in general was a huge no-no because that was just going to drive some of the big base away from you know some other policies and things so even though right now it's extremely hot in all states right not just like the blue states but some of the red states too are, are picking it up yep because it's a huge income stream. Uh, I think they're noticing this right now, especially in COVID when like they're losing a lot of money uh, on taxes and things like, I mean, the fucking restaurants aren't open, the retail spaces aren't open. So they're losing a lot of income. And I think they're looking at cannabis as potentially, you know, almost like a life raft um, for some of these economies, you know, the States and, and obviously. Well, I'll throw you another, I mean, you know, true, what true stoners are worried about right now. I can tell you right now, real that- clear, what is a huge fucking concern. It has nothing what? to do with Republican politics and Trump and going on the other yeah. side. Of Hold on, I'm just going to bring, I'm going to bring John in in case he's got anything to add. So John, I'm just going to add. Hold on. Let screen. me just make this point real quick. Hold All on, right, cool. Go, I'm go fucking on. wait for a fucking second. Uh, one John. of the biggest points that, that, sto- that true stoners have to fucking worry about right now is yeah 
you got on the on the Democratic ticket. That's uh, Kam- Kamala Harris over yeah. there. Oh, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's put like two thousand people personally in jail yeah. for marijuana. The, yeah, the 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 liberal media is trying very hard to repair uh, her record, which is. It's 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 truly unrepairable. If people can look past the last two years, but exclu- that I, I think... lady was a straight up fucking oh. hard ass on just straight weed. Yeah, and, I mean, and you, you kids fucking, going, you smelled like it, you looked like it, and shit like all kinds yeah. of fucked up. That lady is nuts. Yeah, and well, and, and that's not the ant. I, I can just, I, I mean, again, like I said, true stoners, and and this has nothing. This is not an endorsement of the other side whatsoever. But true stoners, be careful. <laughs> when you hear about it when you hear about it, someone who's a DA and then a uh, um, and then uh, you know top cop and DA and all of these high ranking p- positions for uh, for a state and for state and for county in California, and then this yeah. is and this is what's this is what's coming up as uh, and then and then also we're preaching bigger government and more control. I would imagine that's a, a huge concern for uh the cannabis community when you look at her record and how she's uh voted against and yeah, with and, I, and for against for the the cannabis movement yeah i'm gonna bring john in just in case Go ahead. To add something because i know john's also got limited time hey what's guys up, what's Hi, up john. Oh, man i haven't Sorry, seen you guys in so long everyone. how you doing brother it's been Dude, a long I, time i've been what i've been signed on the stream for two minutes i can tell i'm already underprepared <laughs> 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 i literally just googled news <laughs> well, we're, you know, we're, well, I mean, Kamala Harris is the, the, the yeah, 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 for, the I, I was like, oh, you don't know okay. that's going on. I You're under a fucking rock. Fucking news. Fucking I, stoners, I, then I heard him talking about real stoners yeah. and I like started paying attention to what I <laughs> yeah, should. Yeah, of course. Right. <laughs> um, so what's going on, guys? How you been? Nothing. Yeah, I think the last time we saw you or hung out with you was when was we the did rundown. The, uh, the rundown. Yeah. But you weren't even on it. You were just, you were behind. Yeah, I was, I was producing it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was before the rundown was shunned. It was probably know, man. it was like two maybe a week or two right before that. Yeah, so you were doing a good job with that. You were keeping us all in line. You were like, all right, five more minutes on this shit. Move he's a, on. He's a, he's a professional, job. man. Are you, are you still doing that or what? I mean, you're spending all Hold your fucking on time. Hold on one second. I gotta I gotta yeah. st- I'll sign right back in. Okay. Hold on. Bye, John. <laughs> he's gotta, he's gotta, I think he's gotta do a couple lines before he comes back. That's his problem. <laughs> Forgot that Love shit. That. See, that's it. You know, so that. I'm gonna put this down. But the thing about this, this, the, the smoke. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna upgrade the, the rating. I think I gave it a B minus, right? Where are you at now? I'm gonna give it a B, a solid B. Uh, and, and the reason for that because I feel like I dropped the rating because of the, you know, I, I wanted something a little bit more cooler than, than kind of like, you know, this like, you know, this little plastic shit. And, and, right. and I think that's because, you know, with the, um. With the C cell palm, you know, it's a little bit more attractive. I can hit that. I can hit that shit like at a restaurant or outside, and I can feel cool about it. Uh, what's that? C cell palm is hot. C cell palm is hot. But the, but then this thing, I was like, I'm not gonna. I can't. I can't. I can't get away with this. You know, like the sticker thing. It's just like it looks a little cheesy. So, but but the thing, what I'm trying to say is that um, I don't use it the way that uh, the C cell palm is used, right? So I'm not taking this into public. So. I think what I'm trying to say is now that I'm I'm using this. So you remember you told me this. You're like, go work out, go your thing. Because I my my ish, my initial ish, my initial issue was like the fucking smell and like, you know, the whole process of it, uh, letting the flower, being in the house. So you were like, yeah, go work out, do it after you work out, then go fucking take a shower, have dinner with your family and shit. So that's right. the way that I've been riding this. Nice. Uh, and I think it's cool because now it's like you know I, I have this in my lighter in a very you know safe place in the, in the garage fucking come home open the garage take a couple rips go back upstairs so like now you actually hold on let's take a t- quick time out quick pause you're telling me that you actually took my advice hey, hold actually, on a second. something just... i actually really said to you and you took in, my advice like... and you're interested in it. that's awesome <laughs> yeah it's like you know you say things 10 times and i'll listen to you know so you'll you'll say yeah, you'll give you me 10 one things of my things this i'll is do great. I'm, okay. a, I'm, a, I'm like i'm like a 10 i'm like a 10 percent patient so you of yours shower after you smoke dirty weed to that's it that's okay. the way cool. that's the way it rolls got you know i'm just self-conscious to walk around smelling like weed so got uh it, got it john where that what the what the hell's going on man what'd you do nothing what, man so but i i don't know my headphones weren't working i had to switch uh, them up but um so what you guys been up to what are we talking about today 
I mean, just we've been catching up. So Scott's been away for the last couple of weeks. Um, kind of nice. Maine for a while. John. He's been in Maine. Yeah, uh, dude. I was in Maine for when I was in Maine for Saco. It's a great place. It's basically Pennsylvania with a beach. That's yeah, why, that's yeah. why us. You know, that's why we like it. You know, there, I was ex- John. I was excited to have you on because I I haven't had a chance to really hook up with anyone that's been to Saco, and obviously mm-hmm. that was the weekend before we got the news that Kurt was going to get some help. So yeah, it was like I was still in Saco when I got the news. I was still at the house we stayed at. Yeah, so can you it was just- that Monday. Give us the rundown. Like, so what was that experience like when you got up there? I saw, obviously, I mean, I was watching all so, your shit and all your posts. I'll let you yeah. Go. So Thursday we got to Boston. We stayed in Boston. We stayed at the hotel up there um, or that the casino up there at the hotel. Which one was oh, the Which Encore? Casino, was it? Yeah, encore. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Dude, so- we got, I, did you see the room we got? We got like upgraded to a suite. So it was like. I- yeah, I actually thought that was that wasn't Sako then. Where did you stay? So Sacco? no, no, in Sako oh. we had like it was this old mansion that was in kind of. See, that's what I fuck. I think I fucking texted you about that, but you never responded. I I thought I, I heard you say that you were going to get a yeah, fucking mansion. So it was like a big mansion that was like right on Ocean Drive or whatever it is in Sako there or yeah. in kind of Bunkport. And dude, it was from like the 1800s. It had no air conditioning, bro. Who, who was with you though? How many? How many? So how many we had you me, Will, uh, my girlfriend. And then we had who else? We had Jay from Discord. Uh, we yeah. had about maybe about seven people. Like gotcha. Saturday, we had some kids that stayed there. Sunday, some kids yeah. stayed. You know what I mean? Every yeah, day yeah, yeah, had yeah. some different people. But yeah. but you didn't post. A, cool. You didn't post a lot of. Uh, no one really posts a lot of. I didn't post much. Well, for the show, like I made two videos for the show. So like the one video I made the night of this first show. So like I made another video for. The second show, I tried to get a Kirk tunes in, but we could just couldn't get it in time. And then uh, for the first show, I had I had one of the videos. So like I was mostly who's doing making that the Kirk, stuff. Who's making the Kirk tunes? Uh, Barstool Animated makes us. He's so good, dude. He's I just I just messaged him today because we're gonna now that Kirk's back, we're gonna release yeah. one for next week. So yeah, uh, it's probably next Friday or hopefully earlier. He does it pretty quick, but like yeah. we so kind of wait a, a little is bit. He, um, is he a Mena fan or is he just someone? You, he's, he's like a he's, he's a big Barstool like, guy, but Barstool he's a big Barstool guy. So you can tell he's a Boston guy, which means he was just a Mena fan. Like yeah, it's like Deke Zucker. Like Deke Zucker is like a hardcore Mena fan. People don't so, really like. Supposedly, is there really a Zeke? I, I thought there was. I thought there was and, multiple Deke Zuckers. I, like, there, well, there's like one. I I'm like pretty good friends with one at least. <laughs> like because I mean he talks to me the same way. I think there's only one. Like he just has people that have access to the account, but like they can't like DM people you know like yeah so i think so you, had, they, you had a good time with that people on it so you but had a good Saka, time with that mansion Go yeah ahead. it was fun man like well we had the crazy guy that stayed with us so Wait, the first that? night he was, was the guy who guy? like rest the stage at mike and the meta fans wait was there a fu- is that the fucker with like the car alarm and shit like no was so there was two oh, different there there was yeah. a guy that his car alarm was going off uh and then there was a guy who he didn't rush the stage they called him up onto the stage but um Kirk wanted like kicked him off when he was there. It was funny. It was funny. Wait, he, we, so he rushed. He rushed it because he was just like, wasted. And he wanted to like. He was just, yeah, he was just fucked up. Yeah, yeah. he did, like no, they didn't. He didn't rush the stage. Like they called him up, but Kirk was oh. like, no, no, no. I, Ari Minahan called him up, and yeah, Kirk was like, I don't want to talk to this fucking guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 it would do. Here's the way I look at it. Like it was basically. DC did you know him? Did you know him before? Before no, you got no, pretty him much him anyone that stayed with us, I didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, well, other than like Will and like people, like it was the first time we met anybody pretty much down there. So, um, but no, it was fun, man. It was like you just got to meet everybody that you've seen on the internet. So, and like you said, got to see Kirk. Like Kirk was at, like Mike of the Minute fans was in a backyard and the Kirk showed up to do a show. So that was awesome. But it sucked yeah. like the day after all that, like good vibes. <laughs> it was like, yo, yeah. And then, and then we're in the fucking thick of it too. Like everybody just started fucking fight. Like the day Kirk said that shit, like Macron, fucking called me out for some bullshit, all that, whatever, but it's over, yeah, you know, I mean, like, so, you know, obviously being, being a part of the community and, and following all you guys, it's hard. It's hard it's to hard. that stuff. Yeah. But like, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I I mean, and I've, I guess I've stepped back a lot ever since Kirk was gone, you know, in terms of like mm-hmm. 
communicating and you know i'm, Dude, I'm, I'm happy you guys still do this show on here and shit like you guys yeah. are like us like you guys are what what episode are you on yeah this has to be like uh, what 24 20 something right 20 yeah, something we're, right we're definitely yeah. in the 20s. this is Dude, no matter what we just never stopped like oh, they no, <laughs> like we're not no. gonna stop for anyway like even, even, <laughs> like, fucking, even if scott unless like, kirk fucking, literally says you're done i will not stop that's my you. Job. <laughs> i will not that's, stop that's what job. you that's what i said to you right that was like yeah. whenever, whenever the last uh was a, four, I was four, a huge four, component four. for you guys in the beginning because everyone was like get oh, the man, fuck John, off the chair i was like fuck that dude you can't tell people they can I bitched to you for a good like <laughs> yeah. for, for a good two months, and I was yeah, like, "Man, and you were the best. You were the best cheerleader for me." Because yeah, I feel I see. like that logo is still the best. You guys, I made that. Oh, intro. you guys still every... use that intro? Oh, are you kidding me? That fucking it's so good. <laughs> it's, it's, so my, good. It's, my, it's my it's my girlfriend's favorite one I made. Yeah, it's so uh, good. well, that and the lyrics and the song that came yeah, from yeah. Uh, Jingle Doc. Uh, yeah. I forgot on. he made that for you. Oh, and at the yeah. end of it, they have the uh, clip from uh, I put the clip from what's it called in there? Uh, oh, the Tropic or what's it? Pineapple Express at the yeah, beginning. It's so funny. Yeah, it's yeah, funny because after, after our show, uh, I typically stay out for like an extra hour just to kind of put just to set up the episode on like my iMovie on my mm -hmm. computer and then the next morning you know in between work breaks i kind of start yeah start making around the, but like i always play the intro like a couple <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, yeah, like, no, i am that's I why I make it. It when for i'm trying to think time. of ideas when i'm trying to think of ideas i'm like shit i need to talk about i just play that intro i'm like all right i have to live up, I have to, live up to this fucking get you in the, get you in the super long maze mode dude it is it's a fire intro that was when i put my heart and passion into yeah, intro. You did a great job. i'm never i'm all never sucked out of me man now i to go and listen to Cullen yeah. and make promos for him. Hey, like a, you know what? Like I, I actually, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what's going on with Cullen. I, I've been seeing a lot of people post clips and stuff. So what's happening? Is Cullen so like has like a daily podcast he does in the morning? It's so, it's funny. It's funny. yeah. Like, it's like a it's like a pump up podcast. It's like yeah. 20, 30 minutes long. But he's, still, funny. But he's still producing. um produces right? Yeah. 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 So he's, he's just Which doing apparently hard. Kirk is like off on Jerry right now. I saw that. I mean, I heard that this morning. I he mean, I don't know, like, like in defense. He should have been in defense. He mentioned yeah. this morning on the first, it was like within the first like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. I couldn't believe he didn't like he scream at us for every all the bullshit. I was so happy. It was just like, figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he didn't, think, he, dude, he like, didn't say, uh, you know, I don't, again, I think I forget who posted it today, but like they were like, yeah, I want to listen to what he said, but I don't want to get in the downloads. I kind of feel the same way. I haven't, I haven't listened to a single. Uh, show Ooh, Jerry. of Jerry. Of Jerry See, so I love Colin. Like, like I'll do it. Colin Ain's a good dude. Like yeah, he's always looked out for me. Yeah, I don't. I don't. You, I think you did have a relationship with. Him. I don't. I, I yeah. never. I never communicated. Yeah, so, yeah um, like people who don't need it. Like, dude, it's not. I mean, Jerry. I don't listen to Jerry show. I'll listen yeah. to Colin Ain in the morning by himself because, like, I'll help him out with all that stuff yeah. just because so, he's the man. But so, what's the deal with that? So there was an episode after Kirk went back to the to get care. Um, he did he did a show and shit on everyone. I I, I was missing so, that. I guess I, I don't know what it was. I guess they had a show recorded for the day after. Maybe I don't, I don't know what it was. I, it, it, there's like a lost something, you yeah. know? And I, I, I would love to hear that, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm so, sure they're going to talk about it on, on Monday when they're yeah. back. Yeah. Um, what topics have you guys been hitting on this show? What are we talking? What's going on in the weed world? Yeah. Well, you know, Scott, I kind of have our own interests. Um, you know, you know, obviously, I think we share a lot of interests as well. But uh, you know, Scott's really into the the more the weed and and that shit. And I got I got very You're involved in, like, in the politics. What? And I got really involved in politics. Well, <laughs> no, the, poli the politics of <laughs> <laughs> politics and weed is yeah. like fucking hotter than no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To just, summarize, to summarize, yeah. I'm helping folks through. Like, we get a lot, ton of questions around. Um, how do I grow weed? What kind of gummies should I be eating? What kind of weed should I be smoking? Chris, like Chris where and Nathan, I'm, he's a big fan of yours. He uh he's been yeah. tweeting, he's been texting me a lot about or DMing me a lot about your show. Uh, Chris and Meacham, his name is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he tweeted at you actually today, I think, about his plan he brought outside. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna, um, we're basically what I'm gonna deal with him is I'm, and we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna work this out with Eric in the like the next week or so. And now that I'm done fucking around in Maine, is uh, 
Yeah, we got to work out like some grow tips from him. He's got, uh, he seems to be like our little grow expert. And uh, he yeah, yeah, he's, like he's, a, he's a smart dude. Fire and tips at us about stuff. So we're going to, we're going to kind of like start like getting like grow tips from Chris type of deal or something like that. We'll work out some kind of a segment for that. But then, yeah, other than that, it's been like a lot of talking around like where to diagnose on the spectrum and kind of like, you know, sativas versus indicas and shit like mm -hmm. that. And then there's this fucking firestorm going on in uh, the local politics in the state around like. So you, what's your what's Massachusetts for you guys? So it's just completely uh, recreational legal in Boston or is that all Massachusetts? No, it's we're we're all good now. So we we went yeah. we went medical. Uh, okay. Oh, it's medical. We went medical and, five or six years ago, and then a couple of years ago we got recreational. Yeah, you went recreational. That's cool. Yeah, but the politics are, you know, so you it's know, wild. It's wild. Can sell the shit, John. Nobody can sell it. Mm -hmm. anyway. What do you mean? Like, you as in, it? yeah, yeah. Well, like, like tower, here's tower, what's saying? happening around us. It's only yeah. medical. So, like. I think that's the smartest way to do it. I think your state just rushed it. Um, you have to like set up the medical side first, I think, because it establishes like your businesses. So now you have your state run medical places, right? And then like later on down the road, it, when it's kind of more or less, I think, regularized in society around you where like your yeah, friend think, parents are going to the, to the, you know, to get to what's it called the dispensary to pick up yeah. for their prescriptions. At that point, I think it just should become recreational. You know, so when you say when you say state run, I don't know anything about uh, Pennsylvania law. So, so it's, ours it's, are it's kind of like medical here. It's, it's private. Kind of, well, it's well yeah, it's, so it's, only it's, involved it's in private, licensing. but you have to have the state licensing. So it's yeah, like right. it's kind of like how liquor is run now around here. Well, wine, because yeah. you can right. sell it at a private like whereas liquor in our state is state run so there's only liquor stores you know yeah. so yeah i mean all the all the licensings are, i think are given out by county yeah around here so i i don't know how how deep it is but i know the guy who had to do the inspections for one of the biggest grows around scranton is in downtown scranton and they cleared out like a whole city block and just made a warehouse out of it yeah. And but so like big places like that are coming in around us, yeah. which is good. That's what I'm saying. Like you establish with medical, you kind of establish like the the white collar business of the weed area. And then I yeah. think later down the road, I think the recreational just has to come because I think just the crime. Yeah. Well, saves. you know, uh, we talked a lot about this maybe back in May um, yeah, with, yeah. with the guest. But like, you know, the language and the way that you present weed has to be completely flipped as to the way and the stigma that's been presented for the last like you know century yeah so instead of like looking at it from a criminal perspective like you're a fucking stoner you're a drug dealer oh, yeah. you're you're yeah. you're a deadbeat i mean going i look at that shit like it's just so annoying like dude like it's it's weed <laughs> well, <laughs> to me that to, to me the laws on it are annoying like granted you know if you're pushing like kilos across the border then you're a criminal of no matter what you're pushing across the border kilos of it's, it's uh, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in the pharmaceutical industry so pu they push kilos daily <laughs> well i mean you can go off on that <laughs> <I know. laughs> they're the big you know but john know. what what eric's done a great job of of doing is um <clears throat> you, you, your point about the sort of the couple of established medical places mm -hmm. and sort of the establishment is good um, but <laughs> what Eric's done a great job is he's shined a really good light on the fact that they haven't allowed for any of the B players or the little guys to come out. Okay. Yeah. Either, yeah. Right. So a yeah. couple of these four or five very large medical dispensaries that got involved and kind of got in on the market in mass in the, you know, 2011, 2012, when we went medical, Yeah. Um, they haven't really, they've sort of lined the pockets of the local government since then. And there hasn't been any opportunity for a lot of the smaller, smaller businesses to start opening up. And we've got a couple of like three or four like big conglomerates in mass and that's mm. it. Yeah. So Eric's done a good job of sort of shining a flashlight. That, on does that take like, a hey, hit. what's going on with this stuff? Yeah. But doesn't quality take a hit then once it hits like that smaller B level price too, brother price. price yeah. all all of a sudden now the price, like what, yeah. one of the biggest things I pointed out to these folks that Eric stood up for, which I, I totally respect everything he's got going on and the people that he's looking out for. But the problem I've noticed, the biggest thing is, is a couple of these like little independent ones, their price is, you know, 20, 30% higher for an ounce of yeah. weed. And it's like, well, okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, eventually, so that, fucking that's supply that's and demand like, and quality yeah. is going to outtake anybody else. It's like that's Walmart yeah. coming. So, so John, this is this is this is where the politics are coming in involved, is because you know what you said was actually pretty uh, was was incorrect, which is that you're saying the quality is going to go down with some of the B players. But the thing is that because it's so expensive for some of these B, you know, these smaller mm -hmm. businesses yeah. to get. Like they have, there's so much capital that's involved in the investment that the only way to get involved is actually to share uh, your ownership of your business. Ooh, Meaning yeah. that they're giving these larger corporations that are already that are already in the market making like half a billion dollars a year. Um, they are they are giving they're selling ownership to them, and basically what they're also getting involved mm -hmm. in are what are called shelf agreements. So you get a small business guy like you, me, or, or or Scott to open up a small business, but because we fucking blew our load all over the the retail space and to get to get the business opened, yeah, we can't but can't afford the product. So the only way yeah. we can get product in is to give ownership. So you're basically you're almost like you're giving away equity, equity in your own company, and that's and that's the big and that's so that's actually what's driving. See around yeah. me, like those business, like that big grow farm I was talking about that's in downtown. Like that business got a five million dollar grant for finishing their inspection on time by the government. Yeah, Ooh. like that. So that's so that's the kind of like stipulations Pennsylvania put in. But like, granted, there's only Cambridge three charges. Those, only three Cambridge charges you five million. Got. Cambridge charges you five million dollars for the inspection. For yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 that's where Massachusetts. See, that's is. what I mean. Like, I feel like when you guys went recreational, like you guys pretty much went medical right around us. I think, like, I think that has to be a big chunk. If you're gonna go medical right off the bat, I think you should just chunk it out and like get everything. That's how I look at it because, yeah. like, you know, even around me, like, there's still guys who sell weed you know right. so yeah. like, oh, even oh those guys I mean, aren't that, out of if you if you listen to or watch any of our recent episodes we've had a couple people who are still heavily involved in mm -hmm. the market uh or the, oh, they call it the traditional market because the yeah, market. yeah because they're basically they call it the gray the whatever traditional yeah. but it's basically because there's there's like it's still very inaccessible. So like we're talking like when you go medical, I'm not sure what the cost of like an eighth is right now where you are, but mm -hmm. you walk into any of the fucking medical dispensaries before recreation. I think it's come down maybe somewhat, but it's still it's like sixty five dollars. That's insane. I mean, to get a fucking I mean, you're getting you're getting quality stuff that is labeled, branded and tested and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but like the fact of the matter is like. But that's, that's, where we, that's where people who smoke weed lose interest because they're like, yo, yeah. it's weed. <laughs> but the funny thing, but you but you say that, and 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 again, this is sort of part of the drama, and this is sort of the shit that I fucking loved and fell into. But but Netta, which is one of the biggest and largest um growers, retail stores, distributors of, of marijuana here in the state, uh, you know, there's there's a huge influx of 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 employees that are complaining about the health conditions. So you're talking like you think just because these guys are big players and they've got a ton of money that they're selling, you know, healthy shit, but they're actually not. Yeah. Um, they've yeah. got the money to cover up some fucking big time, like mold and bugs and shit like that. Mm. So that shit's yeah, real. Yeah. They got yeah. weed with aphids in it. Little, those little bugs crawling around yeah. inside the buds and stuff. Of it. Oh, wow. Bugs really? Inside the buds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's fucked but up. They, wow. they fucking, but they, but they, they, they jump around uh, all of the red tape, you know, because they think it's a regulated, like everyone right now, because it's medical, they feel like it's safe. Like you're saying, like, that's kind of the way that it's sold. That's the language that they use. That's the package on the fucking little thing that you mm -hmm. buy. Yeah. It's like just, it's, it's cool. Now it's, now it's a Coca-Cola. It's basically paid for a label. Exactly. Label, yeah. Bar -coded paid for a label. Sold. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's not. But that's 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 actually that's the that's the that's the uh, unfortunate piece about it is that it's it's not as safe as I mean some places are obviously doing extremely well, but this one place in particular, well, well, uh, there's is, no is, real regular because who, who's supposed to now regulate this? Now is the state or is the federal or is low? Like now that's when you get into that schematics game where it's just like yeah. now what do we do? You know, so like well that's that's the other uh, thing too. Yeah, that, look at it when it comes to that quality stuff. I knew a kid. I went to college with a kid who ended up like owning a farm out in Colorado. Now this farm produces for the last 15 years because out there it's been open yeah. to do for that long. They were the first. I have always trusted him with all my like quality stuff. So like I've always dealt with him. You know what I mean? So I've never had to worry about the medical or the other side stuff because I've always had him to trust, you know? Yeah. So like he's always telling me what to do, you know? Because well, I was lucky to have a person like that. But for your average schmuck on the road you know so yeah 
especially when you're going into like, I love what you guys did when you, uh, when you went and got your, your first your license. card and everything. That was my great. I love great that. Guinea pig for us. People, yeah. like, <laughs> people don't realize how good of an episode that was. Like, I don't, I've never heard that done before. It was awesome. Thank I've used you. that. I've used it a lot. I've used it a lot with like the diagnosis stuff between the mm-hmm. blogs and that episode. That's been like the biggest like helper yeah. for diagnoses with people helping them. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny, you know, every because in, in Massachusetts, uh, recreational when when the cold COVID thing happened, um, they shut down recreation. They only kept mm-hmm. open medical. So there was like a 500% increase. I'm making that up. There was, it was a huge, it was crazy. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> but it was like, <laughs> it was, but it was like, I'm going to, I mean, it was like 150% increase mm-hmm. in medical license. So it went from like, you know, 6,000 medical patients in the, in the state of Massachusetts to like double that basically. Yeah. I mean, it was huge. I mean, the um, end game for when they're completely regulated, it looks like this. Like yeah. this is how we I mean, will that's, come. Right. That's, I mean, that's, what, that's, what it, that's the end game. So yeah. like we can be there or we can be in this middle ground yeah. where, it's kind of less structured and it's a mess, but yeah. So are you so you're buying so you're not buying your weed medically then you're saying you're going you're still so going I I I buy it uh I buy it never. <laughs> I buy oh, it never. Okay. I, I just have it around like you got I it. An apartment I live in an apartment with a kid who has his car, you know, so like yeah, gotcha. I don't really how hard is it to get the car to you know, talk, talk us through? Do you know any any idea, any knowledge about no, getting the car? So getting your car around here is, isn't that hard. I know like you have to it's like you could do it down to obviously once COVID started, you could use a phone, it's mm-hmm. a phone call, or you could do like a web MD yeah. type yeah. So or, or uh, like over the internet type thing. <clears throat> Which I'm pretty sure, like, that's how you had to do it too. It was over the phone, right? Uh, that's what no, they switched yeah. to. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. But no, it's, I, I mean, anyone I know, I mean, my roommate's mom has her card because it's just you, as long as you have one of those medical uh, situations yeah. where you're allowed to have it, the doctors aren't afraid to say, take it. Like, yeah. I tell my, like, my dad has problem with his eyes and shit. My dad would never smoke weed. He calls it dope. Like, yeah. I was like, dude. Go take a like a tincture under your tongue. Like that's what right. it's for. I, that's what the but they used to use it as an excuse, like yeah. <laughs> for your eyes. Yep. He had like black home. Mm-hmm. Eyes. Like that's what old ladies use it for, Dad. Like, yeah, I mean that's also know? part of that's part of the politics too. The fact that it's still a Schedule One drug. Oh, it, I mean that's is, the biggest, is, I mean is, that's like completely insane. It's American. That's like us saying like slavery is still. <laughs> why are we? <laughs> Watch yourself. <laughs> so crazy. It is not. Watch yourself. yourself. We're not. We're not live. But I don't edit much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to come out. What I'm saying is America allows stupid laws I, to last too long. That's Girl, what I mean. Like it's, yeah. we, we just let this, like this green plant be the same type of drug as this white powder. Like, come on, dude. Yeah. What's going on here? So, you know, so talk me through. So you, you, you got back from Saco and you heard about the news on the way, on the way home or you heard about it. You were still no, there. You said. So the next morning we were all sitting at, like I had that house yeah. Monday too. So yeah. Okay. We were just at the house and we heard it. So yeah, I mean, I had, I I was shocked when I heard that. And then I went up to yeah. like, I don't know if you, you know who gig is, right? The guy, he has yeah, a show. Yeah. 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 yeah I, love so that I, guy. Up, I went up to his house that night and nice. we went on the boat and everything, but like, dude, it yeah. sucked. Like, I mean, it was yeah. just cause we had that huge high coming off of that weekend. It was awesome. Yeah. Like I got to be on the Minifan show too. So I got to go on stage and shit nice uh, yes so, so you were living the fucking life that you're yeah, you man it was awesome it was just you gotta yeah. see everybody yeah you gotta see everybody for the first time pretty much especially coming out of covid too so yeah so so the last month up until today obviously there's just been so much fucking shit and drama yeah. and, I, and like i said i stayed out of it because I, it's hard for me you know it's like all i kept thinking about was like dude I, like i i just hope that because you know kirk is involved in this world as much as he can be when he's gonna going through these treatments right but it's hard to think that he's not uh, attached to his phone or looking something so i i, I just i just, just, just kind of hated it. it how i look at it is like before kirk went in like there was i produce a podcast as he's too i'll give you some dirty details in the dms news here i don't know kirk will probably yell at me for it i'm always in fucking trouble no listen you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys do whatever you want on the show because nobody watches yeah, nobody watches it anyway who cares yeah, we keep producing. So by the time someone actually catches this, we'll be forty more episodes later. Yeah. You guys should start like getting people to hate you again. <laughs> uh, nah, well, the only, the only, the only one person that hated us just left the community. So yeah, yeah, that's true. That's he, true. He, sold, he sold his real estate and fucking he left. Yeah, who's the real fan now, sucker? Um, yeah. 
so like oh, maybe a month before Kirk went in, like I produced this podcast to see two girls, but there was like fighting going on with these two girls and discord and blah, blah, blah. And these girls were going off on Twitter. And, like, I don't, I, I produce one them. show. Well, yeah. Yeah. The roster. Oh, so uh, the produce, roster. Yeah. I produce one like one YouTube show for these girls a week. They have their own podcast and blah, blah, blah. I just do yeah. one show for them for YouTube. And like they were get like fighting Minifans and Kirk DM'd me about that. Mm. And I was like, dude, what are you doing worrying about this stuff? You right. know what I mean? Like, yeah. what do you so that means he was too involved. If right. he's if he's DMing me telling me, like, yo, these girls gotta calm down with yeah. him, like, that's like 10 layers I, deep. And like he that's a great thing to do because like yeah. he's like, yo, this is a bad look for you. Why don't you look out for yourself and make yeah. sure you're but like huh. I, I was like, Kirk, this <laughs> yeah, you're talking about this on a, on a, a yeah. Tuesday morning. Like right. so, <laughs> so uh so do you think he just feels some some level of responsibility to like I what do you what do you what do you think that is? I, I don't think anything of what he feels because his brain is so much different than all, all right so come on i know that but but you're a smart guy we're but all like, what i here. think what happens is, is he yeah, is what's, he's what's, such a professional that he takes such responsibility in his show because he's so proud of it yeah now, I, I mean which i guess is also a cool thing because it actually makes me feel a little bit more connected because he then is sort of saying he's sort of saying that this community is a part of his show cool. i mean you know everyone saying? that's in this community knows it's like you yeah we're in this together it's not yeah. like it's like we're listening to part of my take or a barstool pod like this is yeah. this is yeah yeah it's deeper how like rogan's fans are like we yeah. we consider ourselves like all a family so like when all yeah. this shit happens yeah. it's like dad went to Right, and went to get help. So, like, yeah. that's how it's treated. And then just Mina fans go crazy, <laughs> so, yeah. and then they can't handle themselves. Yeah, I mean, is that because we had a substitute teacher, or we had no teacher, basically? Right, yeah, no teacher, <laughs> no teacher. No teacher. yeah, no teacher. This yeah, time. Kirk, Kirk was funny. He joked about that today. He's like, "Yeah," and Steve and Mike produced about four. You know I think this time, and once again, I'm not going to speak for somebody else, but I think this time, actually, fuck it. I'm, I'm so I hate everybody being afraid dancing on. I don't know. Like I said, no one watching this shit, well, I'm, and I'm not going to. I'm not. I think this time they were seriously like you know like this was a big scary one i think but me. actually they actually thought that this was gonna end this was gonna I be thought, it. like i don't know a I, lot I of people did, man like this, I this one, too. like this one hit us all different because it was coming yeah. off sako like the yeah. way i look at it is sako for pe people i know that have that type of illness like when you have something like sako it's a big live event that's all on your shoulders right yeah they crushed it yeah. Right, all that emotions flowing through you, and then yeah. you know, at eleven fifty nine that night, he was like, "Not what now? You know, right. like what right. now? What's next? What do I? I have to do this again? Like, that's so, the way I look at it. I don't know if that's the way it went down because I can't tell someone else's brain, but yeah. like that's how it that happened in my brain. That's the but impression you know, I had. That was the question I would ask. That's what I know? think it is. It's like that's so much emotion up, and then so much like gone. So like for people with a mo mental illness like that, that can't process those emotions like yeah quickly quickly and they have to handle that demon talking to them on their yeah, the kind of biochemical you know, shit that's going, going on roller coaster with a demon on your side <laughs> like, yeah. you know so like but i you know it, it's it's funny though you say that and um because like, clearly he's got a, an enormous heart just based on i think oh, yeah man his, like, I mean, yeah. so you could tell that that comes like that kind of love like is really it, it really comes out but um so i i could definitely see your your perspective but then it's like but he, he really he kind of downplays some of the live stuff too, right? He, he kind of like because he says, you know, this is the show, the show is the show, and then you know the the, he's the, the good at stuff. keeping it. He's good at keeping it separate until like he yeah. wants to be in show mode. When he's in show mode, he's full show mode. When he's in, yeah. I'm not show mode. He's in full. I'm not show mode. Like that's just yeah. yeah. I think that maybe is part. Of, maybe that's part of having that type of mental yeah uh, mental brain where you you can do that. that I think that he covers things up well. Thing, like, you know? Yeah, I mean, you can you like think about when he was doing like the impressions of like the DJs and like the different like rock intros and stuff on like mm -hmm. like DJ radio announcers and stuff. Like he's like, yeah. hey, you know, like he's he's got all that embedded all in there. You could, tell, you could tell healthy Kirk from there's something going on, Kirk. I think. Yeah. I mean, we listen to we, enough Kirk where I mean, we, when every time he goes on break, we all go and listen to old episodes. Like, yeah. Yeah. Instantly, you're like, wow, Mike actually oh, gave Yeah, you know when he's driving. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, uh, yeah, we actually, we, has, we, Kirk has a plan behind like his eyes. You could tell at some points, and sometimes you're just like, he's absent. Like, what, where is he? That's, yeah. I mean, 
it's yeah we we hit, uh, we hit on that a couple episodes ago i think uh actually when it was when when it, when it was announced that he was going away uh to get some help i think we um were we talking about that scott yeah i came back i just came back on like the nardini thing and the ad yeah we were saying we're, piece and all that that, and that gives like, like that gives this whole situation just a little bit of levity the fact yeah. that he has that now i mean yeah. it could be worse he could be dealing with this and intercom and all the shit they yeah. went through like yeah. Marcel is just like we are here for you yeah. like we to all us minute fans talk shit on barstool but yo non-stop they just kind of like help kirk no matter what and they they haven't broke their word on that yeah well the I leaders the, the leaders i mean uh, the, the back, leaders are all i care about. i don't care about yeah, Brandon Walker I, thing. exactly <laughs> i was gonna say he has nothing it's to fucking, do with kirk. nardini does nardini yeah. does like nardini's right. boss so like i want to yeah. make sure nardini is fucking treating kirk good during this because yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, he obviously too. he obviously emphasized that a ton um you know mm -hmm. i'm not sure did you also hear like in the first two songs that he was sort of like making up uh, he he dropped the um the electric shock ther electric shock therapy. Did you hear that? Yeah. Do you, do you know anyone that's ever gone through that? <laughs> no, I do. I do. I do. I do. Really? Oh my god! Yes, dude. I fucking I did a I did a whole like long um. Wait, are you saying you did it? No, 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 no. I come, I come from, I, <laughs> I would, I would, I would tell you if I did, but I don't, yeah. I've never had it, but um, no, I was in, I come from the mental health field. I was working in public health for, for okay. a long time ago. Uh, okay. and my, one of my initial, um, spots was, was with McLean hospital. So I have a lot, of, I've, I've had a lot of experience and, um, oh, so you're like close by there. Yeah, man, I'm fucking. Oh, I can wow. fucking. So, dude, I go, I go to the studio in heartbeat. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, I live, I live. We, this we is both the man live. that was standing out front and handing out yeah, flowers. Forget that shit, yeah. man. I fucking left the flowers. Actually, I was, I was thinking what I can do for them on Monday night, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to freak him out. <laughs> don't get in trouble, <laughs> Eric. Like, you know what? You know what? It was too soon. It was too soon. And the super lemon guy, hey, his guy, he made me realize. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He quit. He quit just because I dropped my beer. You know, because I was, I was, uh, I was, I was on my way to the gym today, and I stopped by the Seven Eleven to get like you know a fucking Gatorade or whatever, a bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, right in front of me is um, what's the brand of the cookies that he loves? Those stale cracker thing, like uh, cra it's, you know what I'm talking about. He loves no. those the brand. There's like that um, fuck. You know what I'm talking about, Scott? You go to any CVS or any 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 fucking 7-Eleven. It's like those those cookies. There's like the chocolate chip. There's the oatmeal raise or the oatmeal ones. They oh, also have I like know. brownies. You know what I'm talking Otis about? Otis Funkmeyer? The Otis no. Funkmeyer? I don't know. Is that it? Maybe. Maybe. Anyway, so Kurt's a huge fan of those. It, so yeah. I, was, I was thinking about like I, I saw I was walking to the cash register and I saw like the brownies. And the I swear I was God, gonna fucking dump it all into a bag <laughs> and just drop it off, and drop it off in Watertown. Drop Monday, all maybe, bag full. Maybe, you know, or send them. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> send them. I've, I've learned my lesson. No, you know and, uh, we gotta order that pizza that he loves in Waltham. That's what we. No, gotta they're gonna have. deliver it themselves. Yeah, so, so, yeah they'll be. I there. Into that episode where he was eating pizza and Steve was too. They were all eating pizza like at the beginning of one episode. Yeah, it was fucking appalling. I was like, oh my god, dude! It's just like they're just chewing in the microphone. <laughs> I was just like, they didn't, they must have been starving, dude, because yeah, they were. <laughs> that like, was, Steve, I, think, like, I think that was also before, also before they even knew. What's the name of the place again? I, I'm fucking losing track of these fucking names. It's it's not a pizza name. It's not like Giuseppe's. You know what I mean? It's like fucking. It's like the spa. Yeah, yeah, you're off on names today. I know, man. I can't remember the name of it. All I know is this is Waltham. <laughs> fucking <Yeah>. high, man. <laughs> it's the flower, man. He has ripped that pipe several times already. I know. No, no, that's like my feedback. You know, because uh, John, you know, this is this this whole thing is one big long experiment for me too. You know, I'm just fucking yeah, figuring this whole thing out. True. A lot of people hate uh, that about this show, the fact that you didn't smoke weed when you made the show. But I was like, what's the oh, that's a cool idea for a show? I was like, he doesn't smoke oh, weed. Like, gonna, yeah. You know, those fucking Jared's who lost like 600 pounds. I mean, that motherfucker's a pedophile and he's in jail yeah. now. But yeah, I'm not a pedophile. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going <laughs> to see or anything. But, um, but, you know, those people fucking start with with nothing. Right. So yeah. this is me, man. So what? When I'm fucking big. I'm just kidding. Yeah, dude. Well, I'm I'd not be anywhere. I'm not going past my porch. Right. You gotta start somewhere. 
Yeah, exactly. Go start somewhere. It's not a di- it's not a dick measuring contest when it comes to no, getting no, treatment. I've got no, get fucking, smo- I've got no shame smoking, telling people smoking I've never a little bit of weed or ingesting cannabis or vaping is all is all treatment and it's for everybody. Yeah. It's medicine so, and it's from the earth for everybody. So, John, there's fucking rumors, man. What, what you do? You do more. You do a lot more than than weed. What's your What's your? What's your <laughs> I, well, I take Adderall. That's all. Well, no, I mean, you're a young guy. So, what, what's your age now? Just if you don't mind me asking. I am thirty. I just you're turned 30. 30. Okay. Happy birthday. Yeah, I smoked weed like most my whole life, and then stopped. I went to like rehab for shit when I was like twenty six. And then I stopped doing everything for like four years. I started smoking weed like right when I started doing Mincel Intel actually Mm -hmm. again. But then like, I don't do shit that's going to send me to rehab anymore. I'm pretty successful now. So (laughs) I think I've rehab helped, but I mean, so did, did treatment help? Was that, was that something I was, I was doing like, I was doing like Coke at work and shit. So like, yeah, that's where you got to call it quits. (laughs) So no drink. So no drinking, John. No, I drink though. See, so like I, the that. wine guy, you sip Maybe that wine. Uh, that shit. Me learn like what I need to draw the line at and be a human. And I, I've done a good job doing that. Like I don't, I'm, I have a good job. I get paid a lot of money to do my job. I do all this shit. I do a good job for everybody. So like, and I fucking party. <laughs> so, yeah, no, no offense, dude, but like you're fucking, you're fucking Legos at like 3 a.m. I'm thinking, dude, I'm actually, I'm actually thinking this guy's decompensating. I'm actually, I was about to call 911. I would, I, I start. Well, this is going to be the base of my gate for my castle. My castle. Dude. You started posting that shit. I'm like, dude, this guy needs help. No, no. So what's this? So what's the, what, I, I what, what, have fun? That's serious shit. So what the fuck is this Lego shit that you just, you just, you just have so Legos like. Legos. like oh. Dude, I built Legos. Like I, I can. I don't know if you ever seen the mat or uh, Lego movie, but I'm a master builder, dude. Like I, I throw away the, the instruction book immediately yeah. and just build my own shit. I like that's a fun like addiction to like get a set and try to build something out of that set because like you only get a certain amount of pieces. You got to use those pieces accordingly. You know, like that's mm-hmm. a fun thing for me to do. But like my favorite thing is just getting a big bag of Legos and like scooping a bunch and just build. Mm-hmm. Like make a theme though. You have to like mine right now is castle. So like. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna build a fucking fortress, bro. I have a lot of Legos, like garbage bags of them. Builder <laughs> and like, an engineer, bro. One year, one year I bought every Lego they they made. I was making a lot of money that year, and I bought every fucking Lego set. So, all right. So, what exactly does it mean? You go to fucking like Kitty City or whatever the fuck it's called, or, or Toys R Us, and you're like fucking. Many times that I was pretending like I was buying gifts for people, like just because of how many Legos <laughs> I was buying. Like these people see me once a day. I was buying like two sets a day. You're like I'm Prez like, with the fucking unboxing. You've got, got a whole like seven got a living, I living, care room, of. living room full of boxes. You want to show it? Right I was on too many drugs though. <laughs> Does that coincide with your uh, your? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. See, that doesn't though. Like I played Legos my whole life, but like yeah. I was doing drugs at that time too (laughs) and buying a bunch of legos maybe that's why i was buying them (laughs) so so to be honest though were your were your castles like fucking so much better when you're on drugs when when no 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 no. it's kind of (laughs) it's kind of what like killed my like playing with legos actually i mean that's when when i i'm not playing with like my life is fucked up like you know what i mean you know that historic uh commercial this is your this is your brain this is yeah. your brain on drugs. drugs. See, you you, you got to make the fucking the the new one, which is the Legos. No, it's See, like- <laughs> this, this is your brain. This is your this is your Legos. These are Legos on drugs. John, love- you'd be good at John. You'd be good at repairing engines, bro. You'd be good <laughs> at uh, any kind of mechanical engineering. These this pieces that fits this way. This tool yeah, is for yeah. this exact I love, piece. I love like the Sims and all that shit. I love like if I was smarter, I'm just not smart. Like I'm dyslexic, so like it makes it. I can't like read good. That's, like, that's, that's I, need fucking excuse, man. I fucking reach. I I read like on a fourth grade level. It means nothing. Oh, me, too. me too. I haven't made it out like the sixth grade when it comes. But like legit, yeah. like I can't. I can't see letters right. So like like yeah. my. Actually, have that fucking problem. How did you get into the radio, right. into the production stuff? How did you? How did you start? I started Menzel Intel, but like I worked for a radio company. No, that's, yeah, no, that's what I mean. That's, yeah, way, way more, before that. Yeah, come on, yeah. back to the yeah. What, what, what got you in originally? Like, like out of high school, what'd you do? Well, like yo, I in high school I did, had a t-shirt company. Um, like I got in. That's when I first got into Photoshop. All this stuff. Yeah, I made like a t-shirt company. Um, 
I made. Was that like influenced by Barstool or what? what, yeah, what any good brands? Any good logos? What do you got? Was, uh, I'm sorry, I can't find my phone. I was uh, I was in a band, so like oh, I just started kind of like a studio, fake studio, where I made shirts, I made art for people, I made graphics. That was when MySpace was big. So like banner pages and like setting people with my spaces were huge for bands because you could play music on there so like the scene yeah. in scranton was huge then so i started a t-shirt company and kind of like signed some bands to the t but i'd never show my face to people because i was only in high school bro did, did you mean, have a did you have like a tag name or did you go by something different than well i i mean i it was like the studio name like i it was um, white noise studios that's what it was called, what, what was it called? white face white noise white noise studios yeah yeah but like I made a whole t-shirt company and no one knew about it and bought a printer and did a bunch of stupid shit as a kid, like just to try to make money. Did that make you some, some cash though? Was it, was it, oh, was it dude, cash I, flow? I bought a printer and then by college, like Bloomsburg college is by me and they have like this thing called block party. And my boy was in a uh, frat and he split this uh, machine with me and we just made t-shirts for Bloomsburg college for like four straight years. I made like a thousand dollars a week. I know, I know Bloomsburg. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a parties, when they have parties there, it's just like they all get t shirts made or something, you know, like because they're so yeah. big, such huge parties, they'll just yeah, they all they want t shirt, t -shirt. matching t shirts with all, yeah, of yeah, yeah exactly. you, they have, like, do you know that I'm a Philly guy? Do you know that I'm from Philly? Oh, are you? I hate yeah, you. No, no, all right, I'm actually lying, to, I'm actually lying to you. Well, I don't like it, like, uh, like well, Wilmington or something like that. No, I'm from uh, no, I'm from uh, like Bucks County, Northeast. Oh, Bucks so County? Bucks I have yeah, yeah. Bucks County. Bucks County is yeah. not bad. It's no. not. Bad. No, that's like the country of Philly. Exactly. That's exactly yeah, what it was. Yeah. Like, it's like all the fucking country. rich Jews from like New York migrating yeah. and said, "Fuck yeah. that, we're going." We're... Yeah. Basically, yeah. Well, um, I, I fucking hate Pittsburgh. So. <laughs> oh really? No, actually, no. That's a lie. I love I love the city of Pittsburgh. Mm. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of, of of any other sports teams. So when I think oh, about yeah, like yeah. the Steelers, or I think about fucking the Pirates, <laughs> I think about like I'm a Philadelphia guy, and I'm also a New England guy. So yeah. anything that's fucking coming out of Pittsburgh, I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate the fucking Penguins, you know, because I'm a Flyers yeah, guy. I'm so. a Penguins fan. I was a Steelers fan, but I don't like. I I gave up on them, and I hate the Pirates. But I'm a Yankees fan. But I'm a big Penguins fan, man. My, my nephew hey, lives on. Time out. You, like, you, you can't say that to two from to two guys from Boston. I know, I know, I know. I know. Fucking, I get away with it. You're a fucking Yankees I fan. Us is either a Yankees or Boston fan. So I was. I'm an. I'm a Sicilian, bro. My grandpa was oh, a Red Sox fan. Like, that, makes, that makes sense. Yeah, bro. I would be killed on the spot. Yeah, you I'd can't be, wear a fucking Yankees hat at a Saco event. I think. I think you get punched in the face. My Mike wears a Yankees hat every day. That's a good point. A you know what I mean. Point. I'll say hate the Red Sox in this world. So yeah, I have a good time. You know <laughs> you fuck your dislike, right. man. You're a fucking smart dude. <laughs> right. He's quick. He's quick oh, with that job. Yo, I have I have been on the other uh on a stream waiting for me. So boys, thanks for oh, inviting yeah. me. Yeah, go ahead. Man, have, anytime you want, I'll hop on. Maybe I'll thanks, have brother. you on our show if we're not canceled by next week yeah. or something. You said <laughs> time, you said for six months, my invitations never come. So fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm taking my uh, intro back then. <laughs> nope. that, man. I've, I've got that on my uh, um, Google Drive. Drive. I've got that on my hard drive. You can't fucking take that shit back. You, can, Boy, you, 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 gotta, hack, you gotta hack 10 devices. To fucking <laughs> That's pirated, John. Yeah. No, that was pirating. Yeah, yeah. We, we have copyright. All right, man. Love you. Take care. Thanks for having Goodbye. me. All right, bro. See you. That's a good kid. It's like a roller coaster. Always yeah. a good time. I'm not kidding. When he fucking started doing all the Lego shit, I was like, this guy's fucking nuts. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're not following that, but dude, I'm telling you, all you got to do, I've not followed that. That's interesting. Um, I'm telling yeah, put it, put some wrenches and put, uh, put any kind of mechanical piece of any, any kind of engine or a mechanical piece of equipment in front of that kid. He will crush it. Maybe. Absolutely. It takes more than that. It takes more to being good at Legos than to fucking put together like an engine. Oh my God, that kid could rebuild. That kid could tear apart an engine and rebuild it in 20 minutes, probably. Hold on, I'm a little bit of practice. I'm repacking my. This is that's the other fucking thing about this. So I understand the purpose of this is the fucking microdose, but like, 
like when I do one or two, it's fine. But like when I'm on like my third or fourth, I'm like, fuck, it's like annoying. You know, I'd rather. Well, just it's not it. made. Yeah, it's that that's not made to do four rips. That's yeah, made to do one bat hit, one, two yeah. bat hits. If you want to take a bunch of rips, you get a, get yourself a proper glass bowl, as I've told you many times. Maybe I if think... I tell you that 10 more times, you'll absorb it. No, out. No, 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 no. Long. I think I think that's the next step. You know, the, the, the problem is that there's no there's not like a smoke shop in our area. So like to get, get to the a court, nice glass bowl. Are you going to get me one? I'll bring you one. I'll bring you one home. I got gotcha. you. But don't give me one of yours. Like, get me like something. No, no, fresh, I'll get you a fresh, new. brand new one. I won't give you All my right. COVID. Don't worry. Uh, so Go ahead, I was gonna, pack your bowl. I was going to pack one more. Give me one second. Go ahead, pack your bowl. I'll start. I'll intro my uh, my latest blog that I have going on. Um, so the next blog is going to be. Wait, um, time out. Actually, I still have one. I still have one in waiting in the in the queue. Um, throw it out. I got the graphic, uh, and then you know everything. Everything sort of just fell by the wayside. I think after what's the uh, last. What, what was the title of the last one? Give me a second. Whose a second. name was it? Do you remember? I do. Give me a second. I can't remember the last one I sent, but I got a new one. Uh, well, send it to me anyway. But oh, here it is. Um, I don't fucking know, but it's this. It's this guy. Can you see shit? No, just read the first like three. Read the first sentence. Fuck! I just lost the email. God damn it! Suck a dick. You ruined uh, the podcast, Eric. Yeah, right. Uh, profile six. Uh, come on, motherfucker, Eddie. <clears throat> okay, read the first Eddie, sentence. God Eddie. damn it! Eddie is in his early forties. He's married with four children. Two preteens from his first marriage and two toddlers from his second marriage. Ah, what a, yeah. What a, what a slut, man. Eddie's a slut. He's a whore and a liar. He's a medical device salesman with a territory. So I got, I got, I got yours and I got this. I just got to fucking put it together and put it on that blog. Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry. So I have an that. update. I think, I think blog oh, number four or five was uh, was my man John, and uh, the graphic was John on a boat. John, yeah. John on a boat, right? Big yeah, sativa yeah. guy, <clears throat> hippie, hippie kind of partier guy. Doesn't want to, doesn't really want to mess around with those kids and their vapes and their nonsense. Just wants a nice, nice sativa. Um, got some big updates, big updates in John's world. So give me, uh, give me the fucking cock tease. What's the cock tease? I don't have a cock tease. Um, what I have for you is, uh, so John's wife, um, we have to give her a completely different diagnosis, and uh, that'll um, be the so next. You're bringing up John as if we were going to have a follow up, but you're saying that his wife is now going to be a patient of yours. Well, we have a follow up in the sense of uh, the, oh, the the sativa and the high, the kind of high buzz, kind of high level, like like buzzy, mental, uh, heady high that we've been prescribing for John in that blog. Oh, if you ever read it, I read it. I fucking I produced it. It does right. So to our, I'm talking to our audience. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, like, fuck John. You. So John, that John's wife can't handle the uh, the crazy heady sativa highs that we that I prescribed to John. So time out. Did he say in private? Is, like he's like my fucking wife hates me when I smoke this shit. Well, no. So the problem is, is that this wife, she is a long time smoker with John oh. and, and will participate or partake, should I say, when oh. John goes to have a few rips as well. Oh, so she doesn't, she doesn't like it. It's not that he, she doesn't like it with, he, with him on it. Well, I adjusted. No, I, so I adjusted the prescription to oh. meet John's needs and John's pumped about yeah. the prescription that he has. Yeah. But when, but when, but when wifey takes it, when the wife takes it, way too intense doesn't she know that you're not supposed to be using someone else's medical fucking marijuana <laughs> doesn't she know that's the way this shit works man what are you a cop get the fuck out of here yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> so so um, so she's fucking sm so you you gave john an update john's fucking pumped they're and they're a couple like, they're, a, they're a long time married couple of course yeah. I, yeah. I take care of John. I, I perfect his prescription and he is excited. He's like, this is exactly what I need. Perfect. So, so sometimes he tends to get, he can tend to get a little, I don't know, a little dopey, 
Like he'll kind of like, he'll kind of, you know, he'll take those couple reps around four or five. And then, you know, I may, I may run into him. I don't see him every day, obviously, but I may run into him and then, you know, or I'm talking to him and he's kind of lost a little bit. Like he's kind of trailing off or he's just Mm. not with it. So the sativa is, and that's because he's got more of a hybrid or an indica is kind of making him sleepy or he's losing a little bit. So I give him the sativa and that's a little bit more, you know, focused and fired up. Yeah. The issue is, is that now that we've kind of focused and fired up John, yeah. unfortunately, we're wigging out the wife because she's not like that. She that's so, too much of a wig out for her. But uh, so, did you know when you prescribed this to John that his wife is also going to use it? No, she's name? well. Well, I mean, I guess I should have. Yes, I, I assumed so. I yeah, but I wasn't okay. actively thinking about her her or right. her issues. So and do you she, have? Do you have to then take her on and prescribe her something completely different, or do you have to fuck up John shit for this? No, I've I've now prescribed her a different. I've prescribed her a different weed, and I've sent her that, and now we're taking care of that as well. <laughs> that will be the next block. Oh, so so your blog is not an update to John. It's just an, an addition to John's life, which is yeah, yeah. But yeah, now I'm now I've now I'm specifically prescribing for John's wife as well. Nice. Yeah. It's just how the how the wheel how the wheels turn, my friend. Right. Yeah. So um interesting you say this, but next week um I'm actually gonna be on the Cape at this time with Jenny's dad. Jenny's dad is um they're renting a Cape house. Another one of my so, patients. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna bring all actually I brought all my fucking equipment to Maine thinking that we were gonna drop an episode, but then I feel like the day that I was gonna do it. We were close. We were close to doing it. And then whatever shit happened. Yeah, but, I couldn't um, do this. I tried to do the backup day. I just couldn't oh, do the yeah. backup day. Yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. So I'm gonna bring everything again next week and then maybe we can uh, do this again. Yeah, of course. And, and then uh, by that point I'll be back in town. But 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 all I'm trying to say is I'll be I'll be with Jenny's dad. So um, special interview. Yeah. So we can have him on. You know, I'll bring my I'll bring my whole set. So I've got your mic and my mic, and then you know we just loop you in. Call me in, and we're good to go. Yeah. So we're actually getting there Thursday. So I'm gonna drop it on him before we go, just to just to kind of plant the seed. But I think and no gonna... rush doesn't have to be there. I can probably do Friday or Saturday, whatever. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, we're only there Thursday night, Friday night. So it'd be have to okay. be one or two. Yeah. Uh, Whichever one works for you, buddy. You tell me. I can probably make it work. Yeah, I'll work it out with him. Cool. I'm not tired, man. I fucking I want to keep going, but I'm shot. I'm going to bed. Fuck it. Um, but this was a great. But we did good. This is excellent. We just did an hour and fifteen, and uh, it's it's uh, it's quality for sure. Yeah. All right, brother. You, you look good over there. You look like a million bucks. <laughs> I'm glad to see you ripping, ripping, uh, ripping a few, and hanging out and having a good time amidst uh, the heat wave and the COVID. Fuck COVID, man. I swear to God, I'm going to get that fucking tattoo right across my forehead. <laughs> Backward. Back, backwards. Every time I'm fucking in the mirror brushing my teeth, I see fuck COVID. Good. Fuck COVID, man. Good, good. All right, man. Peace. All right, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Super Lemon Haze, motherfucker. What is this? Is it over? We're running out of time. I don't want to hear your excuses. <sighs> No, it's not fair. Where'd all the finals go? Oh! Oh!